Every so often a smartphone comes along that checks all the boxes you'd want, a nice display, decent performance, and overall great price. And that doesn't always happen, but every so often one does come along and I'm always on the hunt for that. So a new mobile sent over the G3 for my review, I quickly jumped on it. I thought it was a very good budget smartphone that really gives you a lot of premium features you don't normally see at a $199 price point. Hey everybody, my name is Andrew and this is my review of the new mobile G3, a budget level smartphone that gives you premium high-end features. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button as I have a lot of exciting things on the way to the studio and of course don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. New Mobile sent this over for my unbiased opinion. I'm not being paid or being sponsored by New Mobile. The New Mobile G3 comes in at a very affordable $199 and I really couldn't believe the price point when I first unboxed this phone as it really is high end and very premium looking. I did a double take in fact. Now this smartphone has just been released. You can get it at Amazon. It's showing it'll be in stock on April 17th. You could also get it directly from New Mobile's website. I'll put the link below for both Amazon and the New Mobile website as well for more information and where you can get it. Now you're getting a lot of features you don't normally get at a $199 price point, including NFC and Voice over LTE. Now, as far as packaging is concerned, it's actually pretty premium considering this is only a $200 budget smartphone. Now, when you open the box, you're greeted by the unit itself. And the first thing you're going to realize, this does not look like a $200 smartphone. It looks much more expensive and much more premium. I was just taken aback on just how good this phone looks. You get some documentation in the box and you also get a clear case which is a nice touch at this $200 price point. They also give you a 3.5 millimeter to USB-C adapter. This does not have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It also gives you the power charger, a SIM ejection tool and of course a USB-C cable. Now there's no way this is a $200 smartphone. I'm holding this and I'm thinking to myself, this has got to be $500 plus at least, and that's not a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, this probably is the best looking $200 smartphone I've ever handled. Powering the new Mobile G3 is the MediaTek processor. It's the Helio P25. We've seen this before in other smartphones I've reviewed on this channel. It's the MediaTek 6737. It's an octa-core processor. It's got four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. It also has something we don't normally see on a $200 smartphone, NFC, which is great for Android Pay. Now, as far as the display is concerned, we're looking at a 5.7 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1440 by 720. That's 282 pixels per inch and it has an 18 by 9 or 2 to 1 aspect ratio. That's what we've been seeing out of smartphones in 2018. This continues the trend. But don't let the numbers fool you. This is one very sharp, very bright excellent display. I couldn't believe just how good this display is, especially at the $199 price point. The blacks are very deep, the colors are very vibrant, and they seem to pop off the display. And my first thoughts were this might be an OLED display. When I looked at the specs and saw that it was an LCD, I was really taken aback. I couldn't believe it because this is a very sharp, excellent display and holding it in the hand feels very comfortable. At 5.7 inches, it just might be the most ideal size for one-handed use. Now, as far as materials used, it's 2.75 arc glass on the front, it's metal around the sides and the back, and there is plastic on the back. It's not glass, at least I don't think it is. Now on the top of the device you have your dual SIM tray. You can house both two SIMs or swap it out for a micro SD card slot if you want to have storage expansion. On the bottom is a USB-C port. Glad to see that rather than the dated micro USB we see on these budget level smartphones. And you have a mono speaker which gets pretty loud. And I really like the fact that the power button has some raised grooves on it, making it easy to differentiate it between that and the volume up and down buttons. 
The new Mobile G3 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and basically I was getting around one and a half days of use with this smartphone with about six hours of screen on time which is about standard of what you'd get for a 3000 milliamp hour battery. And it takes about two hours to fully charge this device from zero to 100%. And it's good to see that it uses USB Type-C, not the more dated standard of micro USB that we find all too many times on these budget level smartphones. Now, I usually don't have anything good to say about these budget level smartphones when it comes to the audio, but this actually sounds pretty decent. It has a hint of bass and the volume is pretty loud. Now let's hear it in action. Now it runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat. I wish it did have Oreo and I'm not sure if it's going to be getting Oreo down the road. Let's keep our fingers crossed if that's the case. Nonetheless, this is a very stock Android experience with no bloatware. It's worked really well. It's very fluid as far as navigating the OS. There's very little lag. I'm actually pretty impressed with this implementation of Android on this phone. Now, as far as performance is concerned, it runs the Helio P25. It's the MediaTek processor we've seen before in other smartphones we reviewed here on this channel. I would say it's a mid-level performer, perfectly fine for everyday use, perfectly fine for doing gaming. Now, if you're going to really do some high-end gaming, you might have to turn down some of the settings, but that's not most of the time. Most of the time, you run everything at its full settings without any issues. I thought this processor performed perfectly fine. On the front is a 13 megapixel front facing shooter. Now let's see it in action. So this is the front facing camera of the new mobile G3. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. It's a 720p front facing camera and uh, I think it's okay. Uh, listen, for this price point, I'm really impressed overall with this phone. Again, I wanna know what you think in the comment section below. There's a dual camera setup on the back. It's a 13 megapixel main shooter along with a 5 megapixel secondary shooter to get that bokeh or blurred background effect. And I thought for the most part, the cameras were pretty decent. Not the best I've ever seen, but certainly not the worst. And especially if you get good lighting conditions, you can get some pretty decent photos. But unfortunately, in some low light situations, things weren't so great, but that's pretty typical for a $200 smartphone. This is not exclusive to this device. That's a problem on other smartphones in this price range as well. But again, in good lighting conditions, I thought we got some pretty decent shots. Now you be the judge. And here you can see the bokeh effect on some of these photos and I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think I've seen other implementations that are a little bit better, but at the $200 price point, I didn't go into this with high expectations. So I'm not really disappointed. I thought in really good lighting conditions, you got some pretty decent shots. Of course, that's my own opinion. Now it does shoot 4K video, 30 frames per second. And actually it's not the worst I've ever seen. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, as far as image stabilization, I don't think it employs any electronic image stabilization. So you will get some jitteriness if you're not holding it very still. But nonetheless, at $200, this is not so bad, actually. The fingerprint sensors located on the back of the device in the center, working well, placement was good, and setup was easy, registering my finger pretty much every time I used it. Although I did notice a slight delay, maybe less than a second or so, when I would use it. But overall, it worked well, nonetheless. Now they do advertise that there is facial recognition, at least in their promotional material, but I'm not sure if it's actually been implemented. I couldn't find it anywhere in the settings. So I'm thinking it's going to come via software update down the road. I'll keep you posted if anything changes, but right now I couldn't find it in any of the settings. Now, when it comes to the GPS, it worked really well, locking into the signals rather quickly, and it was great for navigating with Google Maps and other navigation software. Overall, GPS worked well. And some other features I thought you should know about, obviously it has NFC, so Google Pay works on this device, which is always a positive. It also has voice over LTE, not something you always get at a $200 price point. That's pretty impressive as well. This is an unlocked GSM phone, and in the United States, you can use it on AT&T, T-Mobile, and I'm able to use it with my Project Fi SIM, utilizing the T-Mobile network. Voice over LTE works. LTE in general is very good. Speeds are good. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. 
So to bring it all home, can I recommend the new Mobile G3? And the answer is absolutely. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite budget smartphones for 2018. I'm extremely impressed with how many features they pack into this smartphone. I like its sharp HD Plus display, its great build quality, its sharp sleek looks, its good performance, the fact that it has voice over LTE and NFC at this price point is unheard of, and I love its decent audios, and I most especially like its excellent price of $199. But of course, this is not a perfect smartphone. There are some issues and some compromises, especially at this price point, especially its cameras, which are not great in low light situations. The fact that it runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat, not Oreo or Android 8.0 is a little bit disappointing. Hopefully they'll change that with a software update. Two hours to charge is not really fast in my book, so that's a little bit slow. And it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is a bit disappointing. I don't know why all these manufacturers are leaving that out. I still think it's a very relevant port and many people want it. Now, I do appreciate the fact that they do include that adapter in the box to sort of alleviate the situation, but I much would have preferred a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the device itself. I'm going to give the new Mobile G3 an 85%, making it worth your money. So what do you think about the new Mobile G3? I actually like it. I think at $199, in many ways, this is a steal. You're getting a sharp display, excellent build quality, sharp looks, really good looks on this phone. I'm really impressed with it. Overall features that you don't normally see at a $199 smartphone, you get on this. This actually has a lot of things going for it that smartphones four or five times this price don't have. So I'm really impressed with this overall build, fit and finish, and overall performance was actually pretty good. Again, I'm curious to know what you think about the new Mobile G3. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.